All right, so let's look at some basic examples. Okay, and we'll start with this function, 2x minus 1. So it's a linear function, right? Um, so certainly graphically, graph of a straight line is going to pass this horizontal line test. We know it's 1 to 1. Um, if we wanted to confirm that it's 1 to 1, what we do is, well, so the definition says if f of x1 is equal to f of x2 for some x1, x2, then x1, x2, they have to turn out to be the same x value, right? They have to be the same point, right? So if we have the same outputs, they have to have come from the same input. So we want to show that x1 equals x2. Um, well, we apply the definition of the function. 2x1 minus 1 is equal to 2x2 minus 1. We are allowed to add 1 to both sides of an equation. 2x1 equals 2x2. And now we can divide both sides by 2. Right? So we get x1 equals x2. So we've confirmed what we sort of already knew, I guess, which is that this is a one-to-one -one function. How do we find the inverse? Okay. Well, there, there's a couple of ways that you can find it. One way you can do is if you, if you think about what's going on um, with a function like this, and you think about what the inverse does. Okay. What is this function? So this is the function which takes an input x. First, it multiplies by 2, and then it subtracts 1 from the result. Okay, so we have these two different steps that take place, right? Multiply by 2, then subtract 1. Um, and the order matters, right? If we subtracted 1 and then multiplied by 2, we would get a different answer, right? Um, in fact, we'd have 2x minus 2, right, once, once we distribute it. Uh, so when you're doing the inverse, right, again, you want to think of the inverse as undoing what the original function did. So we want to reverse this operation. But when you reverse the operation, you need to not only do the opposite things, you have to also do them in the opposite order, right? Think about the undo key on your keyboard if you're typing something, right? Undo always does the most recent thing that you did and works its way back, right? Or think about, you know, putting on socks and then shoes, right, when you want to take things off. The shoes have to come off before the socks, right? When you undo things, you reverse the order. So if you think about it that way, we can say, okay, so what did we do? We multiplied by 2, then we subtracted 1. We want to reverse. Well, first thing we undo is the subtraction. So instead of subtracting 1, we'll add 1, okay? Then we have to undo the multiplication. So instead of multiplying by 2, we'll divide by 2, okay? You kind of see it going on here, right? Add 1, then divide by 2. Um, so one thing you could do is you could just say, okay, well, I'm going to guess that f inverse of x is, so what did we say? We add 1, and then we divide the result by 2. How can you confirm? Um, well, One way you can confirm is relying on these cancellation properties. We can say that f of f inverse of x, okay, so that's going to be 2 times f inverse of x minus 1. So that's 2 times x plus 1 over 2 minus 1. Cancel the 2s, x plus 1. 1 minus 1, and it reduces to x. And you could confirm that in the other order the same thing happens. If you did f inverse of f of x, right, if you plug the 2x plus 1 into here, it reduces down to x again. Um, so, so if you can demonstrate that those cancellation properties hold, that's one way to confirm that you do indeed have the inverse. 
Um, another option is, um, well, we can do this. Let y equal f inverse of x. Okay. Well, what can we say about that? Well, if y equals f inverse of x, that's the same thing. Remember from the definition, that's the same thing as saying f of y equals x. So that means that x is equal to, well, what's f of y? f of y, we just replace x by y. We get 2y minus 1. All right. But the thing we wanted was f inverse of x. We want y. So solve for y. Add 1 to both sides. That's going to imply that y is x plus 1 over 2. Right? So you have this systematic way of, of tracking down the answer. Right? Um, so if somebody hands you a function, you're pretty sure that it's 1 to 1. And, and by the way, once we talk about um, derivatives and, and what they tell you about properties of graphs and behavior of graphs, we're going to have some other tools at our disposal um, to, to understand how things work. Uh, where the derivative is one way we'll f be able to confirm that a function is one to one. Um, so there, there will be several tools at our disposal to confirm that a function is one to one. Once we know that, um, this is one method that you could use to track down an inverse. Um, the only downside is, well, if your function is not an algebraic function, maybe you're not going to be able to solve algebraically for y. And we're going to be encountering some of those functions very soon.